Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Redfish 2021.1 webinar. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, this morning or this evening, depending on where you're dialing in from around the world. Uh, my name is uh, Jeff Otter from Hewlett Packard Enterprise. And I also co-chair the DMTF's Redfish Forum. And with me uh, is my other co-chair, uh, Michael Ranieri from Dell. Mike, say hi. Yep. Hi, everyone. I'm Mike Ranieri. I'm the other co-chair of the Redfish Forum. Uh, so just uh, just a quick note that this webinar is being recorded. Uh, once we've uh, completed the session today, uh, it will be posted on the uh, DMTF YouTube channel, and you can you can find the link there on the screen, uh, or just search for uh, DMTF Redfish on YouTube, and you'll you'll find us. Uh, so with that, we'll just uh, we'll dive right into the release. Uh, before I get uh, actually before I get that, let me uh, Shannon, if you can pop up our first poll question. Just want to know uh, kind of where folks are uh, are coming from here from a. a from your expertise level and your experience with redfish. So we'll just give everyone just a few just a few seconds to uh, to give that one a quick quick choice there. All right, well, that, should, that should that should have been enough time for a simple question like that. <laughs> uh, all right, well, so good. Looks like uh, looks like the majority of you are are implementing Redfish uh, on the service side, so you're very very keenly interested in the in the new uh, materials that are being added to the specification. Uh, and I see we have some client uh, client side uh, folks as well, so welcome. That's uh, that's great. We're we're looking to grow the ecosystem. So uh, yeah, and there's one obviously you know some one one horribly confused person and. Uh, uh, on the fishing show thing, but uh, so they may learn something anyway. So uh, Redfish uh, release 2021.1. Uh, this uh, is uh, the, the latest release of the specification and the Redfish schema. Uh, it became publicly available uh, just last week. Uh, there we go. Uh, so here is the here's our general overview of the of the materials in the release. Uh, as is normal for uh, the Redfish uh, release cycle, we, uh, we bundle in uh, uh, and line up uh, the specification and the schema bundles uh, and any of our other uh, materials and try to put these all out at the same time uh, so that it looks like a, uh, a cadence about uh, three or four times a year. Uh, so uh, the uh, the contents this time did include uh, an, an update to the specification. So this is Redfish uh, specification version 1.13. Uh, this, uh, this was the only things added to the uh, spec in this version was uh, some composability support uh, using uh, a new compose action uh, and uh, some, some support for multiple client, uh, multiple clients handling uh, composition um, uh, uh, services, uh, and Mike will get into that here in just a moment. Uh, there was an errata release uh, that, that took uh, a lot of the, the same uh, clarifications that we added in, in 1.13, and that's also been uh, bundled into a previous uh, a write of the previous spec version as is tradition. Uh, the bulk of the work, however, is in the Redfish schema bundle. That, that's the, the bundle is the DSP 8010. Uh, and you can always find those and uh, uh, by the version numbers. And so this is the version 2021.1. Um, lastly, uh, there was a, uh, an update to our message registry bundle. That's DSP 8011. Uh, there is a new uh, message registry specific for, uh, for the update service and for doing software and firmware updates. Uh, the messages contained in that registry are uh, are are there to uh, provide support for showing the workflow of a uh, of a firmware or a software update uh, yeah, as it goes through the process. So, uh, uh, you know, being able to show that uh, something is being updated uh, and then what the outcome uh, of those processes were. So, trying to uh, provide some standard messages for you know various error conditions and faults that can happen during. Uh, during update, uh, as that's a very you know, it's a it's a it's something we we face in the industry. Uh, you know, uh, everyone has firmware updates, and so uh, this is a this is a hopefully a way to help us, uh, uh, you know, get some interoperability and some standardization on the tool side, uh, and being able to monitor the workflow and show that status is a is a critical part of that. 
The uh, bulk of the material is, is of course, uh, schema uh, additions and updates. So in this release, there were six new schemas, uh, and we'll go through each of these. Uh, the 37 updated schemas, I'm not going to dive into the uh, individual properties that were added to 37 schemas today, uh, but those are in uh, the, the version of this uh, presentation that's available on the website uh, that you can look at those, and, and they are also uh, detailed in the readme uh, that's included in the, uh, in the DSP 8010 uh, bundle uh, and everything that I've talked about today is going to be is is already available uh, for download at uh, the DMTF's uh, uh, website. The standards slash Redfish is uh, the place to go there, and I'll have a bunch of other links for you here later on to show you all the uh, the other places that you can get uh, information about Redfish. So. Uh, within the schemas, uh, the, like I said there were six new schemas. We'll talk about each of those uh, here in a, in a moment. Uh, the other uh, items that were uh, of interest, I think, for the you know for a wide audience, uh, is uh, two things. Number one, we added uh, a link to uh, add, adding uh, the environment metrics uh, resource to a number of of uh, device locations around the model, so that allows uh, a, a, a unified. Uh, method to show things like power consumption and temperature of a, of a device and do that consistently throughout the model. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about uh, this in a, in a moment here, but there has also been the additions uh, to, to, uh, uh, to expose the LLDP uh, connectivity information uh, on, on various network pieces. Uh, and like I said, we can, you can see all of the, the, the real details of that are all available uh, in the readme. So, uh, folks that are uh, maybe not uh, as uh, as deep uh, deep into the implementation side uh, on on the uh, in terms of reading schemas and uh, in, and coding a lot of this, uh, the uh, really the the, to, uh, the best way to uh, to read through and see all the information in these schemas is to use our guide documents. Uh, these are uh, these are documents that are uploaded. Excuse me, that are. Uh, that are updated for every Redfish release, and they are uh, they are generated from uh, the schema files themselves using a document generator that's also uh, available on GitHub. Uh, the the re every release, these documents are posted, and uh, they are they are available now. Uh, the the DSP twenty forty six, that's the Redfish resource and schema guide. That's your go to document for uh, really a, a much a much more you know human readable uh, method to uh, document for all of the schema contents. Uh, the property guide is a uh, is an alphabetical sort list of, of every property. So if you find a property that you want to understand, uh, you know, and see where else it's used without the throughout the schema, uh, you can go there. Uh, and the lastly, the schema supplement is is the really the same as the schema guide, but instead of the uh, instead of the user documentation, it's uh, using the developer documentation and uh, as as we would call it in the standards bit, uh, the normative language. And so you get a lot more of the formal uh, formal requirements uh, there. So, so if you're doing a service implementation, uh, definitely look at the schema supplement because you'll find additional uh, additional information that's that's shown in those uh, in those descriptions uh, that can help you, uh, especially in, the, in in error cases or uh, or other questions about you know what what I should do and what I shouldn't. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Mike to talk about the uh, composability enhancements. Great. Thanks, Jeff. So a uh, couple of uh, key areas that were added to composability. So first of all, there, there were new constructs added to the, the resource block model within the composition service to uh, allow a client to be assigned to a given resource and also understand the how the resource that's that it's been assigned is currently being uh, uh, used in composition. So, so each resource block now has the, the ability to uh, be assigned a client. So that way, if say you have uh, uh, like a, such as a Contoso client coming in to query which resource blocks are available, that client is only allowed to see the, the resource blocks that are assigned to Contoso. Um, likewise, th there's uh, additional assignments to show free and active uh, pool constructs. So you have a client coming in to query its uh, its active pool to see which resource blocks have been assigned to uh, composed to uh, composed systems. So that and and uh, also query a free pool to see which resource blocks are free to use for future composition. So that way, it's it's easier for a client to see its own resources that have been assigned to it, as well as uh, how it's uh, currently being used in the in the um, in its uh, composed infrastructure. 
the other addition was a new action to compose uh, different resources with a uh, with a manifest based construct and so this construct allows a, a client to describe a desired outcome for uh, for what it would like to see for a service so um when so when uh when going in with a compose action it provides a a, a list of things to um uh to set up on behalf of the client and and it shows and it gives the uh, the desired outcome there there are a couple different options to go along with that to to control how that manifest is processed you have a preview option so that a client can say i i want to see what we what you would do as my outcome if i give you this manifest and so if everything is successful um the, the service responds with this is the the end outcome if I were to go take this manifest and apply it. There's a preview reserve option so uh, so that way if um, if the uh, the client likes the outcome it it gets back a reservation ID so that later on if when it decides yes I like I like this outcome therefore I will go apply this reservation it can use that that token to a to a uh, to go off and, and, and enact that, uh, that outcome. And then there's the, the simple apply construct where the, the client specifies, this is my manifest, this is my desired outcome, or um, it provides it with a token to say, go, go enact this outcome. And so it builds those, those compositions. Uh, the manifest is a JSON document that is structured as a set of stanzas. So each stanza, uh, uh, describes a single outcome to be fulfilled. And then the semantics around uh, this whole manifest structure is that the, the entire operation is atomic. There, there's no, well, this, this stanza is going to, going to work, this one will fail, so I might have a, um, a, uh, a half successful outcome. It's either everything is applied and it's, and it's successful or, uh, or the, uh, the, the outcome is just not applied at all. All right, next slide, Jeff. So uh, there's a f there are a few new constructs that were that were added to support the, this type of model. So within the composition service, we added our new free pool and active pool collections, and the members of those collections are resource blocks that are already within your your main resource block collection. But they're it's used as a convenience on behalf of clients to see which resource blocks are free and which ones are are active. So in in this uh, diagram, we see that. Um, uh, so a client has access to resource blocks one, two, and three. Resource block one is currently active, so it's part of some composition. And then resource blocks uh, two and three are in its free pool, so those, those are available for uh, future compositions. There's also a new composition reservations collection uh, coming off the composition service. And so when a client does a preview uh, reserve type of uh, composed action, uh, if the um, the service is able to successfully take that request and and um, and store a reservation on behalf of that client, um, it represents that reservation as a, a member of the um, uh, composition reservations collection. So that way, if a client doesn't like the outcome, or if an administrator needs to come in and, and free reservations, they they can walk the uh, the uh, the composition reservations collection and, and delete members as needed. So uh, in terms of the compose action, uh, this is a very simplistic, uh, this is a very simplistic example where uh, there's a single stanza in this request. And so the, um, the manifest body contains uh, a stanzas array and each, each member of that array is, uh, oh, thank you, Jeff, is going to be a, a single desired outcome. In this case, uh, there, the first array member is of type compose system, and that that describes what is that uh, type of operation. And we envision that this this list will grow over time, so it's very composition uh, centric around composing systems. But as things uh, as things evolve over time, we can add new stanza types and, and new request bodies that go along with that. <clears throat> Within the request section, uh, there this is this is the uh, the uh, the body of the uh, the uh, desired request. So in this case, because it's a composed system type of operation, it's going to describe a uh, composed system uh, 
request. And, and uh, today, the semantics for a composed system is you do a post operation on the computer system collection. And so the body, in this case, represents that type of post operation. And so with a set of stanzas that, that describe this, you can, you can chain up together uh, many, many sets of composed, uh, composed system operations together if, if, that, if you need to have a, a bulk allocation of, I want to create 10 new systems of, of these, these types. So, so in this case, the, uh, the client is requesting, uh, it wants to compose a system that consists of Blade Server 1, NVMe Target Appliance 1, and Network Card 1. All right, next slide, Jeff. And so the, the response of that uh, is a is a uh, contains a manifest in and of itself, and there's it's really to show um, what how, how the different uh, requests and responses line up together. So we see that when we start going through the manifest and the stanzas array, we see that uh, we get the the same stanza type back. We get the same stanza ID to show um, to show what that. Uh, what that unique uh, request was. And then we have the request body itself. So a client that uh, needs to line things up, it, it can see that this is what I requested. And likewise, here's the response that came back with it. And so in this case, because it was a composed system type of a request, the response is going to contain your uh, the, uh, the representation of that composed system. And we see that the response contains uh, that computer system instance. So it created a new system in the systems collection called composed system one. Uh, it has some link to uh, to, a, to its processes collection, to its memory collection, uh, network interfaces, storage, and then in links we can we can see that uh, it's tying back to the uh, requested resource blocks that um, that were desired by the client. And uh, if there were more uh, stanzas in there, that's that would just be the uh, the subsequent objects in in that stanzas array. And uh, I'll pass it back to Jeff to describe the uh, the other changes. <clears throat> Great, thanks, Mike. Uh, so before we before we move on, let me let's let's take a, a second here and ask another poll question. Uh, and I think this is the one that uh, that I was alluding to earlier. So wanted to see what your level of uh, of expertise was. Uh, so we'll, there we go. So just asking for you know what's your level of familiarity? Is this uh, are you just getting started? Is this uh, uh, is this uh, is this something you've been working on for a while, or uh, or or are you are you paying attention because because uh, uh, you're a member company and this is uh, this has already been your job? All right, that should be enough time for that. Oh, good. So we've got uh, once again we have a we have a nice uh, uh, split here among folks. Uh, uh, some some a couple of people that are just getting started. So great. That's uh, love, love to see the love to see more people getting involved. Uh, and then uh, kind of a good split here of folks that have uh, done uh, done their own code uh, or are uh, working for a, a, one of the member companies of the forum. So uh, that's great. All right, so uh, to kind of finish up the uh, the the new materials, here is the the. The other, the other uh, uh, pieces, and this is actually uh, two of the new schemas uh, that, that I mentioned earlier. Uh, so, uh, so the first topic here in networking uh, is the uh, the addition of uh, of two new uh, metrics uh, focused resources. Uh, so, for network adapter metrics and for network device function metrics. So, these are. Uh, separate resources that hang off of uh, one of the uh, either a network adapter or a network device function uh, and provide uh, a, 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 a probably a good starting list to here. I'm sure we'll see some more uh, some more metrics get added over time. Uh, the network adapter metric starts with uh, with 14 uh, 14 properties, uh, you know, showing things both on the transmit and receive side. Uh, and uh, we, we struggled mightily with uh, how to name these things consistently. So uh, so uh, yeah, you'll you'll see uh, hopefully a consistent uh, a pattern there to try to to try to make things uh, both readable and also 
uh, you know, to make sense when you uh, look at those resources as a whole. Uh, so you'll see lots of uh, RX and TX in the names, uh, you know, trying to give some some parallelism, uh, you know, on on both sides of that uh, of those you know, transactions. Uh, on the network device function side, there's about uh, there's 18 uh, you know uh, uh, properties that have started. Uh, there's a, a mix of things there on on uh, some of the some of the basics of networking, and then some some very Ethernet specific pieces. Uh, so you know in the in the way that we have uh, uh, crafted Redfish, the these resources are you know are done with separate gets. Uh, you know, they are they are a separate resource that are underneath and uh, underneath whatever related uh, network device function or adapter that uh, that is uh, associated with these with these metrics. Uh, but they're they're put into a separate resource because we expect that that uh, clients will want to uh, you know more frequently uh, poll these resources to get those statistics. Uh, and uh, you know you can then do that without having to without the service side having to uh, produce the you know the much larger payloads for a lot of the you know more static data and you know in, in you know inventory information that comes in the you know in the uh the resource for the adapter or the function itself so this is trying to keep uh the, both the but the payload size small uh but but more importantly is to reduce the amount of processing time on uh on the service side to you know to create those resources so uh and you and you'll see that uh that that's a pattern that we have done you know throughout the specification uh the the biggest addition on the metrics side though is on is on port metrics uh because there was additions made there for uh for some storage uh storage specific uh metrics for ports uh and then a large block uh, of new uh of, of new uh, metrics for uh, trans for the uh, transceivers, uh, so you'll see that those include not only uh, you know data you know data path types of of statistics, uh, but also on the transceiver side there will be things like uh, the 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 you know the power ratings uh, or the the power consumption. Uh, so you know the, the lots of uh, lots of good data there. Uh, and then lastly, in the uh, networking area, we have uh, the addition of of uh, the uh, link layer discovery protocol support, uh, so that's uh, placed at the uh, uh, on each port, uh, and so that includes uh, both the transmit and the receive side of LDP for a specific port, uh, and then uh, depending on your implementation, you either enable or disable uh, LDP can be done either at the adapter level uh, or it can be enabled and disabled at the port level so that will depend on uh, the implementation as to as to how LDP is uh, is enabled all right all right and then uh, lastly uh, the, the the last two uh, new schemas uh, are uh, are you know, somewhat related in the sense that we're we've really fleshed out uh, I think the I think really the last major subsystems in uh, uh, in a typical, you know, computer or server, uh, and uh, you know, we'll we'll see what comes next. <laughs> uh, but uh, there are a couple of here that were that were just hanging out that uh, uh, that that we we finally got to uh, in, in the sense that uh, that uh, you know that there was enough. Uh, uh, enough desire to to get some of the connectivity information that drove us to say, okay, it's time to it's time to flesh out these these other areas, uh, and that's the uh, the number one, the USB controller. Um, so this is uh, really to show the connectivity of a controller with uh, the processor, uh, since there are some architectures that that have some uh, uh, some affinities with the or, or some access restrictions on where the controller and the devices. Uh, you know, land. Uh, so you'll see uh, a new collection of USB controllers uh, underneath the computer system resource, uh, and that allows you to to then have a collection of US of of port resources, which will just be of type USB, uh, and then you can map. Uh, the USB, you know, those those ports to either a, a processor resource to show that connectivity, uh, and also to show a, a PCI device in terms of uh, you know the, the actual controller itself. So uh, this is not a a full tree of the you know the, of the USB devices. Uh, that's not something that we would expect you know to be useful for you know for end users. Uh, it, it, while it may be interesting for some diagnostic purposes, uh, it's an awful lot of information. Number one and number two is generally not accessible to uh, you know, to the to the platform, it's it's uh, held by the operating system, uh, and obviously is uh, you know is, again not 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 particularly helpful for uh, for most management purposes. So and, and a large burden. So so that's not modeled in in, in this uh, in this area. 
Uh, and then lastly, the graphics controllers. So uh, you know, uh, with the uh, with certainly the rise of uh, of of GPUs and uh, uh, the uh, especially with the systems with large numbers of GPUs in them. Uh, so now providing really the adapter uh, type information uh, as well as the uh, port instances to show connectivity so that you can, uh, for those that are actually using them as uh, for display purposes, uh, you know, being able to map these to show uh, which display is, is being driven by which, uh, which controller. Uh, and both of those, uh, I said, land uh, underneath uh, the, uh, the associated computer system resource. All right, so now we'll uh, we'll open up uh, the the floor for questions. Uh, you can type the question into the uh, the chat window. Uh, before we do that, Shannon, why don't you go ahead and put the last of our uh, poll questions up? Uh, and then while she's doing that, uh, also I'll I'll let you know what's going on next. Is uh, uh, we're trying something new uh, today. So uh, as soon as we wrap up here, if there's anyone that wants to type a question, uh, otherwise we're going to uh, move to uh, uh, to another uh, Zoom uh, meeting channel. Uh, where we will have uh, a live uh, roundtable, and I'll have hopefully some more uh, redfish experts joining us. Uh, and uh, anyone on this call is welcome to join, and you can uh, ask us any questions uh, live. It's a little more interactive uh, because it, uh, we're restricted from that in this webinar format. Uh, but uh, you know, join us for that, and we will we will we will start that up as soon as we uh, as soon as we finish here. So. Uh, so before we do that, though, uh, the, the poll question here, I think that should be enough time to answer folks. So uh, one of the one of the things that uh, we spend a lot of time on in the forum is uh, is is producing uh, tools for uh, for helping both developers and users, uh, you know, get uh, get into the Redfish ecosystem. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we have published a number of tools uh, on uh, on the, the DMTF's uh, GitHub repository. Uh, and so this question is to know if it's like, yeah, have, have, you, have you used those? And if you find them, yeah, have you used them? Have you find them helpful? Is there anything else that we need to do for you? Uh, so I see that, yes, a large number of folks have used them uh, for the conformance, uh, the conformance tools. Uh, so that uh, with a large number of you doing Redfish implementations, strongly encourage you to run uh, things like the Redfish Service Validator, which will catch uh, catch a lot of issues for you, you know, very early in your development cycle, uh, and uh, you know is is very comprehensive. Uh, we 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 all use it internally uh, for our development as well, and it will absolutely catch uh, lots of things that are very uh, otherwise maybe you know hard hard for humans to see, uh, you know, especially especially in the in in some of the larger resources. Uh, and I see we've got we've also got folks you know, looking at uh, the the libraries and uh, the, the command line pieces, especially for you folks doing client code, uh, you know, absolutely take a look at what we've done in Tacklebox uh, because uh, Tacklebox calls our, our Python libraries. And so it can show you uh, a lot of good examples for, you know, for how to actually interact with, uh, you know, with Redfish and how to get started writing your own software. So, and for those of you who didn't know those were available, uh, absolutely encourage you to go, to go take a look at those uh, is hopefully they're, hopefully they're helpful. All right. Well, I'm not seeing any uh, open questions, which is fine. I know it's uh, kind of difficult to get to, to get questions typed in. It's much easier to just ask them. So we'll uh, we'll assume that folks are going to join us on the uh, uh, on the roundtable. Uh, so as we close up uh, today, thank you uh, everyone for uh, for joining with us today. Uh, the ways for you to get involved in Redfish, obviously, you know, joining this call is a great way to, uh, for you to, to to learn and hopefully uh, uh, show us show us that, you, that you're interested in what we're doing. Uh, so. The, the, the links here, I'll just kind of run through these quickly. The, the standards page, which I mentioned before, this is where all of the documents and the uh, uh, standards materials are all made available. Uh, they, uh, <clears throat> they're, uh, they are all on that page. And if you look on the right-hand side, you'll also see a lot of uh, presentations and work in progress documents that the forum uh, has also released to the public. Uh, if uh, for, for everyone on this call that's actually uh, doing any development work, uh, if you go to redfish.dmtf.org, that's the uh, Redfish developer portal, and that will link you to everything uh, that we make available on any of the uh, on any of the, the channels and methods through the through, you know, through the Internet. So uh, that has links to all of our open source uh, open source repositories, the YouTube channels, uh, any other materials uh, also has an interactive resource explorer. So it's a allows you to go look at a sample uh, a sample implementation on the screen and kind of browse through it. 
Uh, lastly, the uh, from from a user perspective, we have a, uh, a an end user forum, uh, the redfishforum.com. Uh, so that's your typical uh, you know internet forum that you can ask questions. And uh, uh, as a group, we look at those uh, in our weekly meetings uh, and try to make sure that we have a, a an answer posted for for anything that comes up there. So uh, you're you know you we, you know, if you post something there, we will we will work it through for you. Uh, so, uh, and then uh, I said lastly twice here, but uh, lastly, so as terms of housekeeping, if you have uh, feedback uh, on the standard, if it's a simple question, certainly post it on the Redfish forum. If you want to make a contribution, uh, we absolutely encourage that. Uh, and uh, you know, through the through the DMTF's feedback portal. Uh, and lastly, uh, if you if you are not a member company, we we would love to have you join us. Uh, always looking for more subject matter experts uh, to help us craft and ex and extend the standard. So. Uh, with that, oh, I see Dimitri's got a question about the when will the control draft be finalized? Boy, that's a good question. We are actively working uh, on that control draft. Uh, I, I absolutely expect that we will we will push out another work in progress here very soon. Uh, and uh, and uh, the uh, in terms of finalizing that, uh, I'm, you know, we really need some more feedback uh, to to get that finalized. But uh, I'm I'm hoping that we can. Hoping we will see that in you know if not the next if not the upcoming release then soon after that but uh, but that is uh, that is my opinion and and, uh, and I will tell you that we have a lot of folks that are uh, that are looking for that and so please uh, give us give us feedback we don't want to uh, we don't want to make a, a, a any architectural errors on, on the controls pieces so uh, so you know, we coming coming soon and, and and I plead for feedback on that because uh, it's a complicated area. All right. All right. Well, so with that, I see there are no other uh, no other questions. So uh, so we will we will now transition over to uh, to the uh, the other Zoom uh, meeting for a, a more interactive roundtable. Uh, all of the link information has been posted in the chat, uh, and so if, I'm hoping that uh, the folks that we have on the call will all join us there. Uh, Mike and I are going to disconnect now, and we will uh, head on over there. We'll see you in just a few minutes. So with that, thank you everyone for attending. I hope this has been helpful and uh, please uh, provide uh, uh, any feedback uh, in the survey uh, questions that you uh, should have uh, coming on your screen now, if not, uh, if not in a second. Uh, and uh, again, we appreciate any feedback uh, and uh, we will see you next time. Thank you all for joining.